It's the 7th of September, and I've spent most of this week here in the wonderful Yorkshire Dales, but today I'm going home. However, before I leave, I'm going to spend my last day in the Dales in a place I've only ever visited once before, which was over 26 years ago. That was in my days of youth hostelling, and I spent a night in the village hostel. At the time, I do remember this particular location being one of my favourite spots in the Dales, so I'm really looking forward to revisiting this village today, Malham. Malham is in what is known as Malham Dale, north of Skipton and Gargrave. It really is a pretty place, surrounded by limestone dry stone walls and with a stream running right through the middle of the village. Mentioned in the Doomsday Book as Malgan, Malham has been a settlement for at least a thousand years. Traces of Iron Age boundaries are still visible today. One hundred years ago, Malham was a place of mills and mines. Nowadays, hill farms and tourism are the main activities. The area around Malham is perhaps most famous as featuring some of the finest and most spectacular limestone scenery in the country, and is popular with walkers and ramblers, rock climbers, cavers and potholers, geography field trips and geologists alike. I decided to do a short circular walk, which started by following the Pennine Way northbound from Malham. Very soon came to Malham Cove, a huge natural limestone cliff formed by the Craven Fault and was once the scene of a spectacular prehistoric waterfall. The valley above the cove is now dry with the river having found an alternative route through an undiscovered cave system deep underground. Malham Cove is popular with rock climbers and also peregrine falcons, which have returned in recent years to nest on ledges on the otherwise sheer cliff face. The Pennine Way took me up a series of steps leading to the top of Malham Cove. Upon reaching the top, there is a fine limestone pavement which provides a fine viewpoint over Malham and Malham Dale.
I needed to press on, as I still had quite a way to go. I continued following the Pennine Way, where I found myself passing through some of the spectacular limestone scenery in this part of the Yorkshire Dales. It was around lunchtime when I arrived at Malham Tarn. Set high on Malham Moor, the Tarn is a large lake formed by glaciation in the last ice age, made famous as the setting for Charles Kingsley's classic children's novel, The Water Babies. I've been staying in Halls up in Wensleydale all this week, and this morning just before I left Halls, I called into the local supermarket just to buy a couple of bottles of water to take with me. And as I was waiting in the queue to pay, there was somebody stood in front of me with a basket. Um, and he had, I don't know, got the bottles of wine in his basket. And whilst he was standing there waiting to pay in the queue, his wife went off and started doing the rest of the shopping. So she was going off, taking stuff off the shelves, putting it in the basket, walking off again, getting a couple more things. So by the time this guy got to the till to pay, he had probably about five times as much shopping in his basket. I thought, you cheeky shit. If you want to do your shopping, do it before you get in the bloody queue. <laughs> oh, people do make me laugh. They really do. It's funny because I'm very much a man of routine. But I was talking to this couple last night in Hawes when I was out having a few drinks. They were retired and they came from the West Midlands and they said that they go to Hawes every year the same week, i.e. the first week in September. <laughs> now that's what I call a routine. Well they said that they've been doing it for the last five years and I think when we were talking about it I could sort of appreciate why they did it because one it's the first week the kids have gone back to school, so it's normally quieter around that time. And they also said that the first week of September, as this week has been, every time they've been for the past five years, the weather has been fantastic, absolutely spot on. Can't fault them. Leaving the Pennine Way at Malham Tarn, I began to make my way southeast. I was heading back towards Malham, but via a different route. I could feel my heart pounding at this stage, as I knew the route I was walking would take me through some quite dangerous terrain. By choosing this route back to Malham, I have actually set myself up for rather a challenge. I am looking forward to it, but at the same time, I do have a little feeling of trepidation. We'll see, I'll judge it when I'm there, but I'm gonna do my best to give it a damn good go.
As I approached the top of Gordale Scar, the path soon began to drop steeply, which was made all the more challenging by the loose scree. I really had to take care here. Some 400 feet deep, Gordale Scar is a spectacular feature of the Craven Fault and is believed by some geologists to be the remains of a huge underground cavern whose roof collapsed around the time of the last ice age. Continuing downwards, the path became steeper and steeper and I knew that one false step could be disastrous. had to literally scramble down through the waterfall to the bottom. It was too dangerous even for me to film myself coming down at this point, but I think you can get a good idea looking at these other people scrambling upwards. Although it was a difficult walk, I was very glad I made a point of coming here today, as there is no denying that Gordale Scar is extremely impressive. It was late afternoon, and I didn't have much further to go. As I walked the final mile or so of my circular route, I passed the lovely waterfall known as Janet's Foss. My walk ended as I arrived back in Malham. The village was as delightful as I remembered from my very first visit many years before. With that in mind, I decided to seek out the youth hostel in which I stayed for a night all those years ago. In 1988 I stayed here at Malamu Hostel and the night I was here it was a laugh, it really was. It was, I think there were a group of, I don't know whether they were rugby players or army guys, but they were big burly men and they were just so funny, they were loud but funny and they were just a bunch of jokers. And I think they were doing the Pennine Way, or at least part of it, because I remember leaving the next day and I walked a bit of the Pennine Way with them, and it was just so funny, it was brilliant. That was one of the good things about youth hostelling. You did meet some interesting people on your travels, but I still wouldn't want to do youth hostelling now. But my dilemma now is, which pub am I going to go for a pint in? Is it going to be the Lister Arms or the Buck Inn? <sighs> Difficult. I ended up in the Lister Arms, which, before making my journey home, was a great place to spend the last hour of my lovely day in Malham, and my overall week here in the wonderful Yorkshire Dales. <laughs>